Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Kelly Kovac, the founder of Beauty Matter, and today we're going to do a dive into the world of raw ingredients. We partner with the experts at Univar Solutions to bring you a unique ingredient-focused trend briefing. Brands know the products they want to create, but designing formulations that stand out in the market and play to current consumer expectations and trends come with challenges. Today, we're going to dive into key post-pandemic trends across skincare, hair care, color cosmetics that will help inform product development ideas, keep brands ahead of comp and keep brands ahead of the competition. We'll also contextualize each trend with a discussion of the hero ingredients that brands can utilize to capitalize on the sales potential that each trend provides. So today's webinar is going to be our briefing format. So I'm going to turn the platform over to Thomas Flatley, the global brand manager for Univar um, in beauty and personal care, to walk you through the raw ingredient trends briefing. And then we're going to open things up for questions. We also have Felicia Khan, who's a brand account manager who covers the eastern half of the United States for Univar, who's going to be in the chat. So if you have any questions while Tom goes through the briefing, feel free to pop them in and Felicia will, um, will answer them. We'll also um, have time at the end for, uh, for a Q&A. So you can also put them in the Q&A tab and we can tackle them at the end when we also um, answer the questions that were submitted submitted at registration. So as always, um, this is being recorded. So if you have to leave us for some reason, we hope you don't, but it'll be available on demand. We'll send a link out um, tomorrow. Um, so for those of you who are part of the Beauty Matter community, you know that context is a big deal for us. So let me share a bit about Tom and his role at Univar. He leads the efforts to deliver dedicated solutions for new and growing cosmetic brands. With a chemistry background and more than 10 years of scientific and technical sales expertise in the chemical and ingredient industry, Tom is recognized for his global perspective on market dynamics and the complex challenges faced by all sides of the supply chain. He leads a team of industry experts worldwide, focusing on helping to solve consumer pain points, providing inspiration, access, scale, and speed to market so that we can move, so they can, he can help them move from concept to commercialization. So, you know, Tom has a really unique perspective because trends are one thing, right? So we get all excited about what we can do with what's supposed to be coming in the future. But unless you can actually commercialize a trend, it really doesn't have an impact to your business. So um, this trend briefing is really unique in the perspective of, yes, we're going to identify trends, but Tom's also going to help you through the commercialization of those trends as well to bring a product to market that actually can have an impact to your business. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tom, and I am going to sit back and enjoy the trend briefing from with you guys. I get a little bit of a break today, so Tom, thank you for that. Um, and uh, I will be back for the Q&A section. So Tom, um, take it away. Thanks so much, Kelly. Uh, so if you could just jump to the next slide, Jen. All right, so uh, as uh, Kelly mentioned, what we're looking to do today is really discuss uh, trends covering beauty and personal care, uh, especially focusing on a post-pandemic landscape. And then, you know, touching on what those unique raw ingredients are that we can offer that can really help your product stand out. Um, we'll start today's meeting touching on a uh, safety share. Uh, Univar is very serious about safety. So we have a safety tip at the beginning of every meeting. Uh, then I'll introduce you to Univar Solutions. Um, if you haven't really worked with us in the past, or if you haven't gotten involved in your, uh, your raw ingredient um, portfolio, you may not really be familiar with Univar Solutions. And then I'll also explain what our brand's development team is looking to do and what's really novel about our approach. Uh, then we'll discuss trends, covering a little bit on some of the macro trends within uh, the industry. So uh, kind of those overarching philosophies that should be kept in mind. Uh, and then we'll dive into more micro trends. So covering color cause, skin care, hair care. Um, and then we'll also talk about some unique ingredients that can uh, help your products really stand out from there. And then we'll dive into the Q&A. Next slide. 
So today's safety share is close before you, do you doze. Make sure that you know the difference that a door can make um, when going to sleep. So if you end up uh, falling asleep and if a fire was to break out, um, having a closed door can lead to much more survivable conditions than having an open door. Closed doors have uh, much lower temperatures, uh, below 100 degrees, livable oxygen levels at 18%, uh, and less toxic carbon monoxide levels, uh, not exceeding 100 parts per million. Whereas with an open door, uh, much less survivable temperatures exceeding 1,000 degrees, um, lower oxygen levels below 8%, and extremely toxic carbon monoxide levels uh, exceeding 10,000 parts per million. So make sure when you're falling asleep that you're closing the door to your bedroom, uh, just in case. So I wanted to start off, um, some of you may be familiar with Univar, some of you may not, um, but Univar is a raw ingredient distribution company. Um, people end up working with us because working with your suppliers directly ends up leading to really large MOQs, which especially for brands just starting out, uh, they really can't meet those, those minimum order uh, quantities. So um, with the work that we're doing, we have nine technical account managers and 15 commercial account managers working across the US. Uh, and we're currently calling on 1500 different contract manufacturers across the globe. Um, Univar's sales team is uh, dedicated just to personal care, uh, and most of us has, have extensive experience in the industry in other uh, areas as well, either product development, such as myself, uh, or some marketing background as well. Um, but what we noticed is that there was a, a gap in coverage for either indie brands or emerging brands that they weren't receiving the necessary information in order to have an understanding of what their uh, raw ingredient product portfolio looks like or how to properly manage that or just to how to build a, a product from scratch. So that's really why we developed my team. We've been active uh, in the US for uh, some time now. and We've just recently uh, started expanding globally. So now we also have representation in EMEA. Uh, and the work that we're doing is we really wanna be able to provide a one point of contact for all of a brand's needs. Um, so anything, if it's a new launch or if it's a line expansion, really helping out from uh, concept all the way through commercialization. Next slide. And this is how we do it. So there's, there's really three different categories that we can help with. Uh, two of them we're gonna be uh, discussing today. Uh, and the other one, uh, if interested, please feel free to reach out. Um, but so starting off with formulary support, um, that can be done in a couple of ways. Um, starting off with, what we're doing today, discussing unique raw ingredients within the, the personal care space that could be incorporated to help your, your products uh, kind of exceed the competition. But we also can provide actual formulary support. So we have a lab in Houston and a lab in Charlotte um, where we can do anything from minor modifications all the way up to full scale project briefs. Uh, the nice thing about formulas developed by Univar Solutions is that uh, you own the formulation in full at the end. Uh, and we can also really work with your target costs uh, right from the beginning to have a good understanding of what your end product will, will come out to. The other thing we'll be talking about today is the market intel. So, um, you know, we've partnered with a ton of different resources. We're, we're working with Euromonitor, Mintel, um, Spate, Statista. So if there's any questions regarding your particular market segment, or if you're looking for a little bit more of a deeper dive into a certain um, certain area of a segment, we're more than happy to help there. Um, we've also been helping a lot with uh, white space discussions. So looking at your overall product portfolio, and if you are looking to expand, looking at your, uh, your current offerings and seeing where there may be a gap in coverage and, and helping you have uh, the most robust product portfolio that you can. And then finally, stocking agreements. So I'm um, not gonna be talking about this much today, but at the end of the day, Univar Solutions is a distribution company. So uh, where we really excel is, uh, you know, beyond all the support that we can provide is making sure that as you move into production, that we have the right products for you at the right location. So we can uh, work out if you're using multiple contract manufacturers, we can do multi-location stocking strategies. Um, this can really help lower MOQs to help improve cash flow. And again, looking at your overall volumes uh, to make sure that you have the material when it's needed. Next slide. And then here we have uh, just a breakdown of some of the resources that we have from a, a distribution standpoint. 
Um, we do have local warehousing and we can have that material readily available wherever it's needed. Uh, but our primary warehouses would be Los Angeles, New Jersey, Dallas, Chicago, Atlanta, and Toronto. Uh, we can help with anything from pail size quantities all the way up to rail car, depending upon what your, your brand needs. Um, we do have refrigeration storage uh, and we can help with import and export as well. So that pretty much covers everything about Univar Solutions. And like I said, I wanna start with diving into um, kind of the macro trends. So again, these are kind of the overarching trends that uh, would directly affect the products that you are looking to make, um, but they're not really uh, specific to any category. So starting off, we have our best selves um, and complete wellness head to toe and inside and out. So consumers are uh, tying topical products to what they ingest, right? So it's going beyond just what you're putting into your skin and people are now realizing that it's also what you're putting into your body that can affect or directly affect uh, your overall skin and your overall appearance. Um, actually 55% of consumers feel diet is just as important as skincare uh, skincare products uh, that can affect your overall appearance. Uh, provide realistic aspirations. Um, this is getting into people not wanting to create a fake version of themselves. They want to really highlight their best attributes. So with that, that's where we're seeing people who are, you know, anti-aging is um, something that has, you know, been coming under a bit of fire. There's been some changes there where it's no longer anti-aging, it's now aging gracefully. So. Um, knowing what your key, your natural assets are and really highlighting those. Aligning your philosophy and ethos. Um, this is really important for any brand that's starting out. Um, people, consumers are no longer just looking at the product lines themselves. They're looking at the entire company. They're looking at your mission statement, what you're doing for the community, what you're doing for the environment. And with that, um, if you don't have the right messaging, then you may be targeting the wrong demographic or you may be having the wrong consumer base uh, target. So having an understanding of what your philosophy is, what your brand's philosophy will be, um, is really going to be vital to making sure that you're targeting the right people with your, your marketing aspects. Next, we have sensory disconnect. And this has been a big one during COVID. Um, so online shopping delays sensory experiences. Personal care probably has the most, uh, I guess, sensory input for when you're looking to buy a product, right? Whenever you're thinking about buying something, whether it's skincare or, or color cosmetics, you're you're putting it on your skin, you're putting it on your hand to kind of see how it breaks, you're, um, you're putting it on your, your hand to have an understanding of how it will react to uh, your overall skin tone to see if it blends well. So those have been missing. So uh, with that being kind of cut off due to hygiene and safety concerns, the touch and play aspect of beauty shopping has been completely removed. Now it is coming back um, and we'll get into that in a little bit, but um, with that, we're trying to find different ways to um, kind of stimulate the, the senses. And that's where we have people longing to, to connect with their five senses. So. Um, with touch and feel kind of being uh, put by the wayside, that's where you're seeing other things like ASMR videos and just auditory content uh, is really starting to, to flourish. So trying to find a way where you can stimulate the senses uh, with the limitations that we've been facing. And with that, that's where we get into the last one for sensory disconnect, uh, texture is the new beauty. So looking at that, um, you're starting to see uh, it's not just you know, beautiful models that are being used for um, trying to promote products, but now you're seeing the texture shot or the beauty shot, you know, showing the, the product kind of like spread on a surface. It's a way for us to visualize what the product would actually feel like. It lets you see what that break may be. It makes you see if it's gonna be really creamy or luxurious, or maybe it's gonna be more of like a foamy consistency, but trying to figure out ways where you can really highlight the feel of the product um, since that has kind of been uh, neglected during COVID. The skin color overlap. So skin uh, is eating up color and sun. So with clean beauty, along with holistic wellness, uh, we've been seeing a slow but steady cannibalization of color and sun segments uh, by skincare. 
So what we've been seeing is that multifunctionality push that we've been seeing in, in all categories really for so long is now branching just beyond your standard um, skincare claims and now branching into other categories. Um, so we're starting to see uh, people expecting either some type of tinted product or some type of SPF within most of their skincare. And it's really exacerbating the, uh, the multifunctional need of uh, in the skincare category. Um, customization is a big opportunity. This is huge. Um, this is really being pushed not just by startups, but by multinationals as well. Everyone is trying to figure out how to create that sense of ownership of the product that people are buying. You, no one wants to just go buy a product. They want to buy a product that was made for them. They want that bespoke type of feeling. Um, so with that, uh, we also have uh, skincare actives uh, can distinguish color formulations. So especially looking at color, while you're looking at shade, uh, consumers are looking for other things to really help the product stand out, other ways that they can feel that that product was specifically made for them. Um, and that can be anywhere from uh, looking at ferments to uh, superfoods to vitamins. Uh, it's really opening up a, a totally new world of, of uh, benefits and claims within color cosmetics. And then the final slide is connection and community. And this one is uh, a little bit more obtuse, but um, people want to connect with like-minded others. So especially after you know all the lockdown that we've been facing, um, lockdown isolation has really increased just the desire for community. Um, social media has definitely been the place where people are able to find that. But with that, I think there's a really big opportunity for brands to also be that platform. Um, just because it's all on social media doesn't mean that you can't be leading that community, leading that discussion. Uh, quality over quantity of connections. So lockdown has pushed many people to prioritize which individuals that they're going to be seeing in their lives because they can't see certain people or they can't see people outside of their homes. And it helps them recognize really what they can live with and what they can live without. Um, so it's really caused a more hyper-focused approach to, uh, I think the market, um, people having an understanding of what products they really need. There's been a lot of uh, trial during uh, lockdown because it, people had the time to to test new products um, because they had nothing else to do. Um, so with that, um, you being able to create a really unique experience, you being able to create a really high quality product is going to be paramount to you growing. Uh, you know, out of this uh, this this pandemic landscape. And if you build it, they will come. So rather than being sold to, consumers want to join. And that really goes across all three of these, right? Consumers want to feel like they're a part of a, a community, like they're part of a home. And uh, if, you're, if you give them that platform to share their experiences, to take part in uh, product development, to, to make um, requests uh, and really take those suggestions to face value, then you know when those products do finally launch, the the people that have been taking part are going to feel that ownership. Are going to feel like they're a part of the team, uh, and that will really help build brand loyalty. Next slide. So that really covers um, all of the macro trends, and now we're going to dive into the uh, micro trends. So looking at specifically, we'll start with color cosmetics, and what we'll do is we'll run through a few of the. Um, uh, trending trends uh, within the category. And with that, uh, I'll start discussing some products that I think uh, would be really beneficial for uh, your brands to, to consider um, in your product development. Uh, we're only gonna be doing a really light overview of some of these. So uh, just kind of giving you uh, kind of the bare bones uh, just due to timing. If there is any interest in either more information on the claim substantiation, if there's more uh, requests for more information from a regulatory standpoint um, or just the product itself, please feel free to reach out, let us know. We're more than happy to uh, have a more personal dialogue offline regarding uh, each of these products. So looking at color cause, uh, I think the three on here that are pretty expected would be, you know, mascara, eyebrow, and graphic eyeliner. Um, with us living in lockdown and having to deal with masks so much, uh, the eyes have really become, you know, even more so the window to the soul, right? It's, it's the main way that people can really express themselves. And we've seen mascara is currently up 84% year over year. 
Uh, we're seeing eyebrow is up 20% in searches year over year with 105% growth year over year in laminated brows, um, which is really just creating that really full, full brow um, uh, kind of creating a, a uniformity and just kind of lifting everything. And then we also have graphic eyeliner. So looking at white eyeliners in particular, those are up 146% year over year. Um, beyond those, we also have lip blushing, which is the semi-permanent tattooing of color onto the lips. Those are up 60% uh, year over year with a 30% growth uh, prediction for uh, lip blushing and 109% growth uh, for lip plumping serums. And what's interesting is, uh, especially with lip, uh, you know, color cost has obviously taken a pretty big hit um, over this past year. With that, we've started to see color cosmetics start to rebound. And with that, um, we've seen recently, there was uh, a recent publication talking about uh, lip um, being up, lip searches being up over 300%. Um, I think this second half of the year is gonna be huge for color cosmetics. Uh, we also see glossy looks being up 14% year over year, uh, and that's for both lips and eyes. And neon makeup looks, uh, you know, this is going to be that really bold, making a statement, coming out of lockdown, being able to really just, you know, be your best. And uh, that's where we've seen that up 18% year over year with 138% growth month over month uh, in searches related to neon makeup. Next slide. So starting off with some of the products that I'm going to be talking through. Uh, so we have our natural wax dispersions from Sun. Um, if you are working in color cause, you know that when you're working with a pigment, that typically requires some form of milling in order to um, get a vibrant shade. Um, what's nice is working with a dispersion, it really, really improves the, the ease of formulation. You don't have to do the grinding. Um, what's unique here is that uh, this is synthetic uh, mica that is dispersed in a, a, a vegetable oil mix, but predominantly hydrogenated rapeseed oil. Um, but this has really great uh, pourability, so really easy to work with. It is dry, but it kind of pours out, which is great. Um, really low dusting, uh, but it's going to give you a really luxurious feel. Um, and it can help with a matte effect if that's desired. But this can also help with uh, UV stability and also help with lipstick bleeding as well. Next slide. So next we have the Sun Puro line. Um, so this is their uh, inorganic oxides. So uh, what's really unique here is, you know, a lot of people have similar products, but what's unique about the Sun Puro is that uh, it's the, the heavy metal content. So they have the lowest heavy metal content in the market for uh, against the uh, uh, mercury, arsenic, and, and lead. Uh, and you can see there isn't even restrictions for the other heavy metals that are included. Um, but Sun Pure has their own guidelines that they're abiding to. Um, so you can see for FDA restrictions for TiO2, that's one part per millionth, one part per millionth and 10, whereas the Sun Pure line is at one, one and five. And then looking at the iron oxides, um, it's typically a three, three, 10, and they're operating at one, three, three. So absolutely uh, the lowest heavy metal content. It allows you to use more pigment if desired or more, more oxide. Um, and then with that, if you're looking to make any kind of clean claims, that is absolutely helpful. So looking at their soft text line, as I mentioned earlier, if you are working in color cause, there's typically some form of milling that needs to happen. Um, and the reason for that is that you get your conventional pigment, you need to break down that, that product and you have to prevent any kind of agglomerations or aggregations to get the most bang for your buck, the most vibrant color you can. Um, Typically that, that does take some time and it is quite a, a strenuous process. Um, it, and uh, with the soft text line, um, this is both organic and inorganic pigments, um, but it has a really narrow particle size distribution. And what they've done is they've essentially pre-milled the product and really cut down on what that uh, range is. That way, when you're working with the product, um, you get really vibrant colors for much less work, which you can see just looking at the standard pigments uh, on the left here, and then looking at the soft text on the right with the same amount of milling, you're getting a much more vibrant color. And then looking at the Intensa line, um, so these are gonna be your super bold colors. Um, these are really vibrant, super neon. Um, if you're looking to hit that neon trend, I haven't seen anything that performs on this level 
um, compared to the Intensives. They're really easy to work with. It's stirring products, which is great, but it's gonna give you that really intense color, that intense chroma, and it can really help with gloss as well. Um, and again, this is gonna help reduce your overall bleeding. Um, but what's nice is um, there are some products that have restrictions on eye and lip, but they do have products that are uh, acceptable for that type of application as well. So uh, if you're looking for neon, the Intensa line is absolutely where I would suggest starting. And then looking at the expansion that Sun came out with recently is the Intensa glitters. So uh, specifically looking at glitters, a big concern has been microplastics, right? Um, uh, a great you know, benefit of working with the Intensa line is that uh, everything is on synthetic mica. So there is no plastic, there's no microplastic concern at all with these glitters. Um, they are based on pigment, so they can be blended with some other pigments. And you can see there some of the colors that you can get really vibrant, really bold colors. Uh, and if you're looking for a chunky glitter, this is perfect. If you're looking for less chunky, we do have other options in sun, sunshine line as well. Next slide. So pulling away from uh, the, the pigments, the other product I really wanted to talk about was Dow's new Dow Sil EL7314 silicone elastomer blend. Um, so what's really unique here is when you're working with a color cause and you're trying to create something like either a foundation or, or an eyeshadow, you want to be working with something that um, has great feel uh, and also has long wear. Typically, you had to look in two different places for that. So you'd be working with your, your commercial, your typical silicone elastomer technology, um, and that would really give you that flexibility and give you that soft skin feel, but it didn't really help at all with durability. Then you also had your silicone film formers, and you could either be looking at a silicone acrylate or a silicone resin gum. And those are going to be great at giving you abrasion resistance, at sebum resistance, and wash off resistance. But they're not really giving you much, much benefit for, for overall feel. And that's where the EL7314 comes in. So this is going to give you a really unique texture, really unique transforming feel, great flexibility, great durability. And then it's already, uh, it's also uh, compatible with organics. It has great water uptake and can also work as a rheology modifier. Next slide. So the Inky is uh, isobutadecane, which is the carrier, uh, and hexyl succinyl dimethicone cross polymer. Um, so this is, uh, it also has really low um, D4, D5, so uh, that helps with global compliance. Um, and use levels aren't uh, terrible. You can use it at higher volumes if you'd like, but just using at either 2% in emulsion or 5% uh, in anhydrous for, uh, formulations will work. And uh, talking about the durability, uh, this is durability that I, I've really never seen before. So they've done studies where they've done in vivo testing with kind of a, a uh, temporary tattoo using this product. And they've been able to have the temporary tan temporary tattoo stay on for days, not hours, but like literal days with regular wash and wear. So really unique product. Um, highly suggest uh, looking into it if interested. So that takes us off of uh, uh, the color cause and now we're diving into the trends in skincare. Next slide. So all of the skincare trends are really tied to just helping perfect, helping to um, make yourself better, really promoting your, your best self. So you have dark circles are up 36% year over year. Um, then you have fungal acne, which I think is also a bit tied to that mask knee um, concern. So that's up 195% year over year with a 36% growth prediction for the next 12 months. Wrinkles are up 20%. Uh, our searches and wrinkles are up 20%. Um, and uh, that's expected to be sustained growth as well. Now, I will say, remember with wrinkles, we're not talking anti-aging here, we're talking about aging gracefully, highlighting your key attributes um, and not creating a fake self. Sensitive skin is up 42% year over year with a 9% growth prediction for the next 12 months. And then hyperpigmentation up 70% with 12 with 14% growth prediction and pores at 36%, and that's tied to pore perfecting, cleansing, or clearing. Next slide. So starting off talking about, uh, about skincare, the, the most predominant product across the, the board has really been vitamins as of late, right? Everyone wants to have some form of vitamins in their product. 
Um, the most popular that has been, I, I'd say more sustained has really been uh, vitamin C. Um, that's used uh, really across the board, depending if you're looking at either Mastige or looking at really high end products. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the actual benefits of working with vitamin C, but I feel like most people really have an understanding of what those benefits typically look like. So what I wanted to highlight was DSM's quality series. So DSM has the lowest carbon footprint for manufacturing their vitamin C. And it's 59% reduction compared to main alternative sources. And what's even better is working with DSM's quality C series, if you have an understanding of what your utilization looks, looks like, DSM has a tool where you can input your usage and it'll tell you how many tons of carbon dioxide you've pulled out by utilizing their product. So in an in a age where sustainability is you know, vital and having an understanding of what that story is and how to properly tell that story across the entire supply chain, um, I think focusing on DSM's vitamin C is really important. So they also, they have their ascorbic acid, their standard vitamin C, then they also have a stabilized version uh, known as Stacy 50. Next slide. And then looking at the benefits, uh, just in case some of you weren't aware, you're getting great antioxidant and photoreceptive properties. Uh, it does a great job of uh, skin balancing, um, you get really good uh, reduction in acne. Uh, you do have anti-aging, but now we're going to be calling that aging gracefully. Uh, and then you also have uh, outside of skincare, you have really good hair growth uh, claims and uh, uh, can also be used in oral care as well. As well. So the vitamin that I'd say has seen the largest spike has absolutely been niacinamide. Uh, so this is vitamin B3 very stable. This has been the, out of requests that I personally get for vitamins. This is hands down the most by far. Um, it does have similar benefits to what you'd be getting with vitamin C, right? You're going to be getting um, uh, skin balancing, skin brightening. Um, you're going to be getting uh, anti-acne benefits. Um, you'll be getting skin smoothing a bit, um, but you'll also be getting kind of an anti-wrinkle type of effect. Um, and it's also very sensitive. Um, but you know, the one thing I wanted to touch on, next slide, is the new studies that uh, DSM has regarding their UV and blue light stress skincare. So looking specifically at blue light, this is a category that has been gaining a lot of traction, uh, especially with us all being in lockdown. I'm sure, I know my screen time has increased. I'm sure everyone else's has. Uh, and then looking at the studies by incorporating the niacinamide, you can see the difference differences between the non-irradiated and the irradiated, irradiated. So you can see going from 100%, which is kind of unfazed to something that has no protection, it, it went all the way down to zero. And this is uh, a study of the um, uh, the oxidative stress that's, that's occurring on the skin. So with that, just by adding 3% of niacinamide, they were able to increase protection by 23%. And then with an additional 0.5% of uh, DL alpha tocopherol, vitamin E, they're able to get uh, up to 63%. Next slide. And this is also looking, same product, but looking at some of the ex vivo studies. So uh, they did have a skin biopsy uh, in a culture where they uh, took readings before and after UV light uh, radiation or blue light radiation. Uh, and you can see the differences between the uh, non-irradiated and this is their raw score. So again, measuring the antioxidative stress not irritated, almost zero with irritate, uh, irritation due to the irradiated going really high. And then uh, once niacinamide is introduced, you're seeing a 48% reduction. And this is through ex vivo studies. So uh, the other thing I wanted to make sure to cover on was uh, preservation. So uh, this is a, a huge factor for, for all personal care. The last thing you want to see is a recall being done because there was some type of outbreak in product. Um, but preservation has gotten a lot more difficult, right? Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, regulation on what preservatives can be used. Um, if it's not actual regulation, you're seeing uh, limitations based on uh, who the retail partner would be. Um, so I did want to highlight, if you're looking for some natural broad spectrum uh, preservation systems, uh, Intellex does offer the Spectrostat G2 Natural MB. Um, this is 100% natural uh, and is broad spectrum. Uh, these are also suitable, I believe the ranges uh, from four to eight, so really broad uh, pH ranges as well. And then uh, lower natural content, but the Spectrostat PHL, another broad spectrum, 66% natural. 
but has great water solubility and is really good for uh, sensitive skin. Um, I won't touch on the others here today, but if you do have questions regarding other broad spectrum systems that aren't natural, um, we can discuss those as well. And I wanted to touch on one of the new offerings from uh, Intellex regarding preservation. They have their LexGuard Natural MHG, um, MB. So this is uh, the Inky is uh, methylheptylglycerin. Um, this is not broad spectrum, but they are uh, working on a, uh, a blend that will be, and they'll be releasing shortly. Um, but not only does this offer really great preservation against uh, bacteria and yeast, so this would need to be paired with uh, an additional fungicide, but it does have some really unique um, multifunctional benefits as well. So this can really help with odor control. Um, so it can be used in natural deodorants to help boost um, odor limitation, and then also for anti-soaping. Anyone who's uh, worked with a, a natural skincare type of product, they know that there's a lot of soaping that comes with that, um, and that's when you're rubbing it in and it kind of has like a, a white look, similar like if you just took some soap and just kind of rubbed it in your hands. Um, this will help reduce that. So uh, some really unique offerings uh, coming from Intellex. Next slide. And then looking for some, some unique sensory, right? Sensory is really uh, at the forefront right now. So depending upon what type of um, feel that you're looking for, um, some offerings from Intellex, if you're looking for a light and powdery feel, uh, you have the Sistolio TL, uh, which is Trilorin. Uh, if you're looking for something that's more in the middle, still light, but has quite a nourishing benefit, that would be the Sistolio MCT with the Inky uh, Triheptanoin. And if you're looking for that really rich, buttery, creamy texture, you have the uh, Sistolio TSB, uh, which is the hydrogenated rape seed oil. So that covers everything for uh, skincare. So diving into hair care, next slide. And the, the big focus that I, I've noticed here is just scalp, right? Scalp has been um, taking the forefront. You've, you've seen the, the need for that multifunctional type of product um, across all categories. And in hair care, it's going from having the hair care claims to trying to have more of a skincare type of claim for the scalp. Um, and with that, we've seen um, some really unique products within the market. Um, but for, for where we've seen the most focus regarding trends, we have hair oil, which is up 51%. Uh, and that's specifically focusing on coconut, castor, olive, and argan oils. And I think a lot of that is tied to the um, big DIY push that we saw um, within hair care is still going strong, but um, something that we, we saw really pick up during lockdown. Scalp is up 30% uh, year over year growth uh, with searches tied to dry psoriasis and itchy being the top categories, which then leads us into dandruff uh, at 27% year over year growth with a 1.8% growth prediction. Um, and then for hair growth, which we'll talk about in a little bit, is up 47% year over year uh, with searches up 27% year over year, specifically looking at vitamins for hair growth. Uh, curls, uh, now I think this is definitely more like the, the natural curl type of look, uh, that's up 20% year over year with a 1.2% growth prediction for the next 12 months. And bangs are up 51% year over year uh, with over 2 million searches related to bangs in various hairstyles. And the one Honorable mention, which I'll make, which I didn't include, but uh, is, is near and dear to my heart. Mullets are actually uh, skyrocketing right now. Um, so if anyone on the call has been thinking about business in the front with party in the back, now is absolutely the time to try it out. So looking at uh, products. So uh, Dow offers the Maze Care Style Polymer. Um, so this is going to be uh, bio-based. Uh, the Inky is hydrolyzed cornstarch. Uh, use levels uh, can be relatively low, so you can work with uh, 0.5 to 5% usage, has great shelf life. Um, and what this would be is a great replacement for PVP. So if you're looking for a natural fixative for hair, which is extremely hard to come by, especially when that works well, um, this is definitely the product for you. Next slide. So looking at some of the benefits of it in formulation, so it's gonna work really similar to PVP, but have the, the natural claims to go along with it. But where it really excels is in high humidity. So uh, through humidity testing compared to PVP, this actually outperforms PVP for uh, really long hold and for curl retention as well. 
We've seen this used in um, uh, gels. We've seen it used in kind of waxy pomades and fluid sprays. Uh, but we've also recently been seeing it used a lot in um, brow gels. So again, going back to that laminated brow, this is, this is something that can really help there. And then I want to talk about the hydroxy shield polymer. Um, so if you're looking for an offering that can really do everything across the board, if you want a multifunctional benefit from Dow, then um, this would be the product for you. And not only is this multifunctional from a benefit standpoint, but from a line standpoint, this can be used across the board. So it can be used in shampoos, sulfate-free shampoos, rinse off conditioners, uh, leave-in treatments, uh, and hair coloring kits as well. Um, with that, the types of benefits that you're gonna be getting, so you'll have a really healthy hair appearance. Uh, you'll have great hair protection, smooth feeling, so that silicone feel that, that gives you that, that nice brush through with your, your hair. Um, it'll help delay color fade away, so it helps with color protection, and then reduce breakage from heat uh, appliances, so heat protection as well. Next slide. So the inky here is uh, BIS, the isopropyl, an anole amino, PG, propyl, disiloxane, bisphenol, dimethicone, cross polymer. Uh, so with that, um, it is a 90% active with 10% uh, butyloctanol, but that is also readily biodegradable. So um, the siloxane, it's really a three kind of prong approach. So you have the siloxane in the product and that is providing the softness and that silky feel that'll help with combability. Then you have the aminos, which is help anchoring it to the hair. So it'll help, um, help prevent uh, loss from uh, rinse out uh, or helps it with rinse out, but it won't, it won't lead to buildup either, which is great. Uh, and then the hydroxyl, which provides that perceived moisturization benefit as well. Another great multifunctional product is Phytantriol from DSM. Um, the Inky is Phytantriol and uh, this is synthetic, uh, but it's really great and compatible with uh, oil and has great stability as well. So next slide, looking at the benefits. Like I said, great multifunctional product. Uh, and what's really great here is the low use level. So deposition, you're gonna have great boosts, uh, boosting of the effects of panthenol at just 0.1%. Moisturization is gonna go up with just 0.1%. Strengthening of the hair, so reduction in breakage. Uh, you'll have color protection as well at 0.2%. Uh, split end protection at 0.2% and heat protection at 0.2 as well, uh, or 0.1 to 0.5. Uh, looking at the Boplex, so this is where I mentioned earlier talking about kind of the um, anti-hair loss uh, tied to vitamins. So this is DSM's vitamin blend for hair care. Uh, this contains vitamin B3, B5, B6, vitamin C, and vitamin E. Um, use levels are not super high, just up to 2%. Um, and this is really targeting the scalp and the hair fiber, fibers, uh, and it is dispersible in water. So the benefits that you're going to be getting here, uh, you'll have anti-aging, um, which is antioxidative properties. You'll have anti-graying, which helps to recover hair pigmentation or hair darkening. You'll have anti-loss, and that's going to also help with hair density and thickness, and then scalp care in general, just building that barrier. Next slide. And here's just some of the substantiation. So for the anti-loss, 76% uh, proliferation of hair follicles. And this was ex vivo, prolongation of the antigen phase of hair follicles. So really health, uh, increasing the health of the overall hair follicle itself. So up two times the placebo, uh, ex vivo. Increase in hair thickness, so up 4% uh, and density up 7% in vivo. And then for anti-graying or hair darkening, we saw a 7% increase in, uh, in hair graying reduction after four months, and that's with in vivo studies. And 60% of volunteers showed improvement in hair pigmentation with the Boplex VH. Next, I wanna talk about uh, DSM's Tillamore Boost 150. So the inky here is uh, polyquaternium 110. And this is, even though that's the inky and that's uh, somewhat of a standard inky, there's a lot of products that can kind of fall under that. So this is a really unique hyper-branched polymer. Um, so when it's applied, when it's in your wet hair, it is in a lamellar phase. So it's kind of just kind of stacked uh, look, right? But then during the hair drying phase, so when you're blow drying or when you're drying your hair, uh, it goes through, I'm going to butcher this word, co-acervate um, 
uh, mechanism. So what happens is it goes from that lamellar phase to a hexagonal phase. So it really just kind of pops and kind of blooms out. So with that, that's where you're going to get, that's going to help increase the overall volume in your hair uh, and will really help um, boost any kind of uh, volume, volume claims that you're looking for. Next slide. And the last product I wanted to talk through was uh, the UCare Extreme Polymer. Um, so this is uh, all natural, um, or this is um, naturally derived and is uh, bio-based. Um, so this is coming from wood. Uh, and what you're going to be getting here is uh, similar benefits to if you're working with silicone um, for conditioning, but it really outperforms any of the non-silicone type of products that you may be looking at for, for these types of conditioning benefits. So it'll help with um, break reduction. It'll help with both wet and dry combability. Um, use levels are really low, so you're having really good weight efficiency in usage and formulation. Um, uh, and then also looking at uh, it compared against um, various typical benchmarks within the market from a, a conditioning benefit. Um, it's going to outperform in slipperiness. It's going to outperform in uh, feel and smoothness. Um, I mean, a great product all around if you're looking for those same types of benefits coming from uh, a product. But uh, this does also work great. Uh, in conjunction with silicones as well. Um, but if you're looking for um, no compromise on performance for your rinse off conditioners, uh, or if you're looking for leave on conditioners, this, this is absolutely the product that I'd suggest using. Next slide. And that is it. Uh, Kelly, there. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. That was really great. We have um, got about 10 minutes left. So I think, you know, let's try and tackle some of these questions in the Q&A, um, if you're cool with that. Sure, yeah. So this is an interesting one. And it, 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 it's, um, it's a conversation that we have a lot, um, kind of on the editorial team. Mm -hmm. And it's the concept of transparency and, and what that and what that really means. So, you know, I think when it gets down, in, the consumers want transparency, that's clear, yeah. right? But but the beauty industry has been very closed kimono, like it's all about proprietary information, you know, yeah. um, and IP, and it's not really flying anymore because brands need to deliver on what consumers want, but they can't do it without visibility all the way through the supply chain. like. Consumers want to know where these ingredients are coming from. So, you know, how how do you see ingredient suppliers adapting to provide kind of clarity on sourcing, sustainability, efficacy, and efficacy? Effic oh my God, I can't even speak. <laughs> efficacy <laughs> claims yeah. um, that consumers are demanding. Do you see them now addressing that in how they're selling ingredients? Um, so yeah, so I would say that when we when we're promoting products from the raw ingredient space, we are providing a lot of that information up front. Um, we can provide whatever regulatory needs are right. We're we're constantly adapting as well to make sure that if there's information that's needed or if there's changes, that we're providing that information. Uh, and we absolutely focus on performance as well when talking about new products that we can offer. Um, now, utilizing a individual raw ingredient and the claims that are made with that raw ingredient by the supplier, by you know the testing that they've done. Um, if it's in your formulation, you should still conduct some additional third-party testing for your claims um, because there may be some synergies that are occurring in the formulation with your specific formula that can uh, even give you maybe a better claim or it may be hindering the overall performance of the product. And then that's where you know Univar Solutions can help provide assistance as well. We do have application testing, both analytical and physical uh, in our Houston lab. What I will call out, though, as well, Kelly, with, with your comments of that transparency is, you know, what has been plaguing the personal care market for so long has just been misinformation, yeah. right? Um, there's so much misinformation in the market. And I think a lot of that has been tied to, like you said, you know, that closed kimono, not really wanting to, to share that information. So it allows, if there's no platform for brands to highlight what they're utilizing their product for, then it really falls on the everyday consumer. And there's so much misinformation from you know, bloggers who don't have any type of uh, background regarding utilizing the product or 
the raw ingredients. Um, that's where you're seeing a lot of pushback uh, regarding products that are absolutely safe, that have you know no no issues whatsoever. But you're seeing um, a lot of uh, negative connotation from the consumer base because no one has promoted the actual truth within the market. So I think as brands start to become more transparent, I think not only is that going to help a brand sell their product, but I think in the end, I think it's just going to be overall more beneficial for the category as a whole because it'll allow us to really educate the consumer across the board. You know, uh, kind of to follow on, we have a question around, you know, I mean, this is a loaded question, but what does clean beauty really mean, right? We see <laughs> in, we see in, um, I mean, everything from the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, uh, Washington Post to sort of Vogue and all the consumer beauty trades, like everyone is really questioning sort of this whole concept of, not the concept of clean beauty, but like, are you really delivering it? Right. And, you know, from an ingredient, so from an ingredient level, right, like in your opinion, because I think a lot of this comes down to opinions because it's not regulated, it's purely based on right. opinions. Um, what is considered clean? Uh, I really hate the word clean. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Someone asked me what I thought what yeah. clean meant to me and I said absolutely nothing. nothing. It just came yeah, flying exactly. out of my so, mouth. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's really the case, right? I mean, if, if, if you're looking, if someone's trying to make a claim like, hey, this, you know, this product's natural, like, what does that even mean, right? I mean, um, there's been so much greenwashing that has happened within personal care space that, I mean, consumers are, are really over the idea of, of clean. They're over the idea of natural. Um, you can still make natural claims, but I think what is really important is making sure you know what that percentage is. So no, consumers don't need 100% natural, right? What they need is sustainable. They need to understand that the product that they're using is somehow suitable. There's going to be products that are 100% natural that are terrible for the environment. And there's going to be products that are 100% synthetic that are great for the environment. But what it really means is having that, again, that transparency, having the information readily available either on your website. I've seen brands that are putting on their website. I've seen brands that are actually highlighting the actual percentages within their formulations on the bottles themselves. So, I mean, the more information that you can provide regarding what you're doing, the efforts that you're taking, um, and really focusing more so on that sustainability aspect, I think that's where that's where the, the trend will, will continue to move beyond just, you know, clean. Right. So the, this is another kind of hot topic, and that's sort of supply chains, right? So, you know, we're already... Um, supply chains are still really disrupted. Oh, yeah. um, but now we're also seeing, and I don't know whether it's a byproduct, but I think it's a byproduct of supply chains, but also just sort of economic um, instability. So, you know, I've been reading on the supply side, you know, increases anywhere from five to 10%. Um, are you seeing sort of, are you seeing the supply chain starting to work itself out? Should brands be anticipating um, increases kind of on the raw ingredient side? Like what's happening? Because it's very, it's a little hard to predict at the moment. Yeah. So uh, the big issue is that there's so many factors that have come into play to really disrupt the distribution network in general, right? Um, you're seeing a, a huge spike in the U.S., not everywhere else, but really in the U.S. I mean, demand has went from nothing during COVID to, I mean, huge volumes overnight of what people are looking for. Um, along with that, you're seeing steel pricing has gone through the roof. Um, that's also led to a shortage in steel drums, which if we're transporting material that, you know, if we don't have anything to pack it off into, then we're tight. Um, that led to uh, also a shortage in totes because steel cages weren't available. Uh, and along with that, we tried transitioning to poly drums. Poly is uh, uh, a product that's manufactured using propylene glycol, which ran extremely tight, still tight, due to uh, the severe weather that we had in the Gulf. So do I see it getting better anytime soon? Um, no. Um, with that, what I do suggest is getting, you know, getting a handle on your raw ingredient utilization. If you're starting out now, now's the best time to start to get an understanding of how much product you're utilizing. If you're utilizing multiple contract manufacturers, knowing how much of each ingredient is used at each CM. 
and then connect with us, right? The more information that we have regarding what your brand needs, the better planning that we can do. Now, I will say we are in unprecedented times right now. So even with some information, it's it's still going to be really tight and really hard. But what will help is having that information and we can provide you with an accurate understanding of when material you know, will either possibly be available or um, when we suspect things to start to lighten up. And, you know, working with Univar Solutions, we can provide updates regularly on what we're seeing within the market uh, overall. Well, you know, you provide such a unique um, solution because so many brands are kind of they're, they're, they, their hands are tied sometimes when it comes to, you know, being able to unlock these supply chain problems because at the end of the day, they, they need their contract manufacturers to do that. But you're sort of providing brands, at least from an ingredient standpoint, a workaround. I wouldn't necessarily, it's, it's not a workaround, right? So we still have our sales team. We still work really closely with contract manufacturers. Well, from an information standpoint. Right, right. <laughs> right. So, but, but you know, with with the information that we receive, let's say we're working on some type of stocking agreement. Uh, brand tells me the amount of of a silicone that they need. So what I would then be able to do is trickle that information, knowing where it's being utilized. And if you don't have that information, if you can just share with me the percent of the product in the formulation, the fill rate of the final product, and how much product you're ma you're manufacturing, we can build forecast and manage that forecast for you. So knowing that, we then take that information, trickle that down to the uh, sales team, and then they have that information for each contract manufacturers. And then we're able to build a more accurate forecast. It's more so, it's not that, you know, like you said, like it's not that we're trying to um, circumvent, but what we're trying to do is just provide everyone with the right amount of information so they, they can make their educated decisions on what types of agreements they want to establish, how much material they should be telling their contract manufacturer to purchase, you know, don't be purchasing, uh, you know, on time, don't, don't be purchasing for, you know, one month supply, try to have some, some ample stock on hand for sure. Yeah. I mean, it, I think that brands, I think brands have had to go deeper into their supply chain to, to sort of future proof their brands, um, which has made them sort of rethink, um, not only product development, but, but production. And I mean, a few years ago, like, what you're doing didn't even really exist. I think it's, I think it's really powerful for brands. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're definitely the, the only distribution team that has a, a network like this. Um, we're, you know, especially in the raw ingredient space, um, there, there really isn't anyone looking to service indie brands. You know, there's, there's people that are looking to do it. They're consultants that they can provide great right. assistance and great service. But if you're looking for someone to be able to do everything from one stop and also provide you with that insight into the raw ingredient space, uh, we're pretty much the only ones on the market right now. Yeah. Well, Tom, thank you so much for your time today and for putting the, the presentation together. I know there were some questions, there was a question in the chat on whether you'd be and or Univar is going to be at Cosmoprof. So are you going to be there? Um, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I think I personally will not be there, but. But um, someone will. Yeah, I, well, I don't, don't quote me on it. I'm not sure. Okay. We'll, All right. We'll, well, we will revert back <laughs> on the Cosmoprof question. Yeah, come back to I, think, <laughs> I think a lot of people, uh, their plans are still up in the air on that. Mm -hmm. But um, so thank you so much. Um, anyone who wants to get this presentation um, in the chat is Tom's email. You can reach out to him um, uh, to get a copy of it. You can also ask him any questions that you have directly uh, related to your business. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us this afternoon and Univar's uh, collaboration in bringing you this information. We do a lot of trend briefings. This is our first one on raw ingredients. And I think we're off to a good start because it was not only super granular, but it also provided context to, on what to do with the, uh, with the information and the ingredients. So Tom, thanks a lot for that. And um, hopefully we'll, we'll work together some more. Yeah, looking forward All to right. it. All right, thanks Tom, have a great day. Bye.